Dr. Sean, how are you today? Doing fine, doing fine, Susan. How are you? Great. Good, Good to see you again. Good oh. to see you. Gosh. Yes, you so, too, you too. <laughs> the last um, three shows we've had, it's just been such interesting topics. So the first one on social media, and obviously kids, our kids. Um, and then the second one on cheating, and I think we might have yet another interest, I mean, more interest, because that, you know, that conversation really could expand. Um, but I know you and I had previously talked about how trauma uh, is a really, really large topic as well. So, and I know a lot about trauma because of my own, obviously, experiences. Um, so if we could just touch on trauma and basically what you know in regards to, you know, in regards to psychiatry, I think that's a lot of what you deal with, isn't it? Right. Yeah, so what I'm doing is just basically typing in in the Google, but it's taking its natural born time as normal. <laughs> but uh, so trauma is a, um, by definition, it's a noun. It's a deeply distressing or disturbing experience. So as you just said, you, you've had quite a few experiences uh, and it's distressing in the context. I've always uh, stated it that it's a mental stress and a psychological stress because even though the experience is there, it's hard to forget it because memory does not go away. Um, and that is the hardship of being traumatized. Right. Oh yeah, so the wiring. So essentially what you're saying is the wiring and what I'm learning through you know, therapy and finding out more about what trauma is because I didn't know I was even traumatized up until about three years ago. And uh, so I think, you know, for me, it was, it's an eye opener because there's so many Americans or people in general, uh, even if they come from other countries, you know, which are probably in some cases worse, but there's so many people in this country that are absolutely traumatized and they don't even have a clue that they've been traumatized. And there isn't one person walking around in this country that hasn't been traumatized. Correct. That, 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 that's correct. And that goes across the board as far as male and female and culturally around the world. Um, because what's acceptable socially in one area is not as socially acceptable in the other. But at the same time, they, the experience that one and then the other has is it, really terrifying to, to know these things. Yes. In fact, I just put something together. I mean, the first two episodes we did, was, so if you think about it, those kids are being traumatized because they're witnessing things and then they're learning sex. So that's, uh, and then if a girl or a guy, you know, has sex and one moves on no. to another, I mean, that's trauma, right? Betrayal and fear of abandonment. And then, it went up, uh, then the adults we were talking about, cheating, that's huge trauma. Yes. Yes, Be because because one, especially in the adult cheating scenario, and we really didn't touch on it too much, but the adults are set in their ways. The actual trauma when it comes to the adults is actually at the um, uh, child developing stages when they have their first love and then they get heartbroken. Well, to agree, uh, it is a trauma because it is a bad experience, and that trauma is compounded over time and it's never remembered and then socially we talk about the low self-esteem issues well they're low self-esteem because of the trauma and because of those experiences within that system um, and then now your adult dating and fear kicks in oh my gosh but but there's more than uh, low self-esteem right I mean, oh, oh yes absolutely absolutely what other traits show up, like in terms of behaviors of these children? Like, so are they, I think there's more perpetuation of like um, bullying, perhaps? So and when they're in a teenager, you know, or younger ages, then it's more defined. Um, uh, the individual may be bullied a little bit. They may be the, the, the quiet kind that goes into the corner. Um, they may not want to have friends. This is where we will. Well, this is the ages where we find a lot of the suicide issues, the depression, and things of that nature. The older they get, if, if a, a child can get into the older ages, 
then they conform to social uh, makeup and marks. So therefore it's easier to hide it as an adult. Interesting, but it's really not something that is hidden because doesn't it always come out in some form or some way as an adult? Right. But let's get to, okay, so let's go back to sure. earlier childhood because sure. I really want to touch on, um, and part of it, if you'll excuse me for this, but I could use me even as an example, because like I said, I had no clue I was traumatized up until three years ago. And now everything, I almost feel like everything that's happened to me in my life is connected to that trauma. Yes. Like everything. And now my levels of trauma might be a little bit different than others. Um, you know, I've had the bullying. I was the kid that just acted like a wallflower, was really quiet. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm very quiet on the playground and would go then, you know, go other kids that were bullied and try to give them compassion because I could tell through compassion and empathy that they were getting bullied. Right. right. So, right. so I guess I don't want to touch on my own traumas, but I want to find out like, so for instance, from a psychiatry background, what are you finding in terms of younger kids behaviors? So withdrawing, so isolation, so very sure. making no friends or very few friendships, right? Right. So, so, so we, yes, definitely. And then you can touch on depression, anxiety. There's a um, personality de uh, deficiencies and defects within those uh, lower level of social supports. Um, and I'm just reading off the psychology uh, definition here. So there's psychiatric disorders and things of that nature. So, so we can give it all names, but basically what it really means is when a child is, has been traumatized, they're not inclusive to the social and to the movement of the social makeup, right? So if you have a group of kids and they're moving one way, the traumatized kid to a degree is, is very um, noticeable because they're going against the grain or they're outside of the crowd. Um, and I'm just using, trying to use that as the analogy of it. I love it. Can I just interject for one second? Sure, sure. You know, from the very day I landed here in the United States at age seven, I felt different. So mm -hmm. not only was it culturally different, I couldn't speak the language and learned it very quickly. However, even past that, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, all of those years, I always felt I was different than everybody else. And there was something that I couldn't figure out why I wasn't fitting in, why I couldn't relate or, or maybe other people couldn't relate to me, you know? Uh, so my walls went up and I isolated. I said, nobody gets me. So I am just gonna say to myself. Right. <laughs> and I had no idea. Yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. So just in those experiences for me, yeah. Uh, if there are other children who are feeling exactly the same way mm -hmm. as I was feeling, and of course now as an adult, and I have a lot of uh, various friends with all different types of traumas, and they have much more like, uh, I guess, common things with me. Even, even like, you know, so I talked to you prior to this show, I don't sleep well. Insomnia has always been an issue. I never realized my insomnia and not sleeping well is connected to the trauma, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. so, and I do know that there's a higher level or, or prevalence of insomnia. Oh, yes, yeah, absolutely. And, and you got those who don't want to keep the, the turn the lights off, um, those who don't want to sleep alone. <laughs> and, and very... Or, or, oh, my mm -hmm. God. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, all of that okay and then what about even the wiring let's talk about the wiring because um, sure. that is something that I'm now just realizing so every connection right. <laughs> me comes from the past and I realize because I always thought I was different my mind worked so differently I always mm -hmm. thought um, there was something wrong with me because I could not stay focused mm -hmm. you know teachers talking there I am in school and I'm listening but I can't hear right. because my mind is over here my mind is out the window. My mind is like somewhere else. Right. You know, I'm, I'm like connecting with nature or I'm like, woo, -hoo, and, and I'm in my imagination out here. The teacher is right there. So I never did really, really well because I never could hear. 
I could not focus on the teacher. Correct, and which is no different than in today's time. There's one major difference between your experience and what you're doing in, or have done in school and what's going on in school today. And, and parents nor teacher can really understand uh, or di differentiate it anymore um, because we, we've learned how to recognize your experience, right? Uh, students in classroom not paying attention is, is imagining so we can say something's wrong with that, that child. However, today's time, technology masks it because now technology, the kids are in their computers or their, their phone and they're zoomed into their phone, which everyone else is zooming in onto their phone. So who's really traumatized and who's just really researching <laughs> kind of deal. So it's masking. So what you're saying is it's masking the trauma within our kids. So we are Correct. not able to approach Correct. them. Correct. Correct. And so if parents can go into the kid's phone and look at the history of their videos and their searches, the one way to find out is what are they searching? What are they looking at in the YouTubes and all of those videos? If you can figure out what they're looking at and what they're searching, you can pretty much get a great idea of their state of mind of where they're at now. Wow. So what, what, what would a parent, let's say, you know, be aware of what, what types of uh, sites, what types of, what's a red flag, I guess, for a parent sure. to start sure. to look to maybe, you know, connect that there's trauma in their kid's life and they've got to get some, you know, therapy or some sort right. of help at an early Right. So, so, so we have to be careful when we talk about trauma by itself. So trauma, again, like I said, it's an experience. It's a bad experience. Let's simplify it. Kids yes. nowadays um, have bad experiences because mom and dad just simply won't give them no money to go to the movies. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so we have to be very careful of saying what is and what is not trauma. Okay. Um, yes. Secondly, let's let's use depression for an, for the example. Yes, yes. If if the parent goes into their phone and they're starting to see a lot of sad stories or relating other stories like music and videos and search things about suicides, about cutting themselves, about you know various things of expression from the depression state of thought. Um, that's a good sign that the parent needs to take the child to get some help. So self-destructive behaviors. It could be self-destructive externally, and it could be self-destructive internally within themselves that's expressed through their phones. For example, kids who play that uh, video, um, um, kill everybody with the guns and all that in the war. Well, that's an expression of, um, of trauma into a degree because they're killing, because they're doing war, because they're doing all these other things. High risk or, and or extremely dangerous. Correct, correct. Um, and so, so what we're talking about from child to adult now, what we're really talking about is suppressing the remembrance. So I'm suppressing all of what I remember. Now, negative remembrance, uh, I should say negative remembrance here, but now I'm suppressing it with good memory, good memory, good memory, good memory. Now, what happens is as an adult, I kind of forget it. It's just an underlying thought, right? Until I get triggered. Then, then it burrows all the way through and is now on top of all of the good memory. Uh, the old saying is you can do a hundred good things, but do one thing wrong. You just might as well forget it. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. So that's okay. So that's gonna, that's opening up a whole huge can of worms now. Right. And right. My, I'm going to attempt to <laughs> remember right. what I want to ask you. So let's just go back. Sure. Uh, Okay, so trauma, that is a extremely intense, basically, memory, and... Uh, it's the experience, that experience is then has a memory to it, yes. which we call memory, correct. Okay, so, and uh, often, if a child has a trauma or multiple traumas, mm -hmm. um, that child who has that memory then is going to 
perhaps like reperpetuate it? I mean, wouldn't that be a common thing for them? And it might not look the same. And here's why I use that. It's because it, that has happened to me. So okay. traumas, and then as a child getting bullied, you know, and then as an adult having, and I wasn't, you know, but then I had uh, multiple financial abuses this and from friends or per, you know personal relationships and also business relationships and those types of uh, relationships all different categories but still I put myself into higher risk situations where I was taken advantage of so it was recently that I had to really look at that aspect of my life and I went you're not a victim you chose to do every single one of those situations so guess what that's on you and is that connected to you know my childhood trauma and right so so what you're what i'm hearing what, what i'm thinking is for example certain kids get uh, traumatized um for example parents so dad or mom is an alcoholic they smoke they get uh, beaten and so on and so forth uh, abused yeah. The kid is aware, being aware of this abuse. Well, they themselves might be going through the same nature, being bullied, at, in your case, being bullied at school, but at the same time, the home is also expressing a different scenario. So in context, what I'm hearing is what you've grown up to, to be is what we call codependency. Yes. So in context, what does that codependency mean? That means if you were beating up here and then there was no discipline behind it, there was no reasoning of how to fix this. Um, unlike today's time, there's, there's discipline behind it. Back in those days, it was just an afterthought. Growing mm -hmm. up, unless you've grown out of that uh, thought or that uh, personality, then you're going to have different people abuse you and different people abuse you and different people abuse you. Um, we, yeah. we can, oh, go ahead. No, I was just saying we can look at it in, in the context of dating. If, if, a, if a young lady dates a certain kind of guy and she breaks up with him because he abuses her, then he gets the same, she gets another guy, but he does the same abuse. And then she does another guy and then he does the same abuse. After a while, she's going to say, what's wrong with me? Why am I attracting all these crazy people? <laughs> exactly. It's because of the underlying of how you were treated younger and you just some kind of way thought that was just a way to go. Comfortable. It becomes comfortable. It was comfortable in one hand, but it was also acceptance on the other because you were an outsider. So oh. if someone bullied you, you took yeah. it because after all, I want to be included. And that's part of being inclusion. And as you grow up, the abuse still happened. And you thought, uh, that's inclusion and so on and so forth. Wow. Wow. Interesting. Uh, right. inter interesting way to look at it. So essentially, so a person who has been or a child who has been traumatized will re-attract that same trauma but may look a little different as an adult Correct. and continue, continue the same patterns of accepting trauma Correct. and use it as you know comfort and what i mean by that is i've had multiple relationships yes one was very controlling one was very very um you know we're verbally just tear down after tear down after you know just oh gosh it was so awful like you know you're the worst person in the world and yet i didn't ever see it as a big thing until i just didn't want to deal with it anymore and then said you know what on to the max right so it's not it seems like there's been some form of abuse so I don't want to go into my situation. So can you tell me from a psychiatry standpoint and please explain? Uh, so individuals that have been traumatized, mm -hmm. they then tend to probably find other very unhealthy. So can you explain codependency one, but then sure. in addition, how does that show up in the structure of a relationship? And how are those relationships, you know, so what sure. do they Sure. So the the... The general and the 
the easier to identify codependency is the, the child being traumatized by their parents. So let's say the trauma from the child point of view is the parents themselves. Uh, mom is being abused by dad or mom is a single mom, but she drinks a lot. And so the child is now taking care of uh, the, the drunk mother. So as she grows up, her thought process is ingrained as this is my role. Okay, so I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read the the It's an excess, um, excessive emotional or psychological reliance on a partner. So they're relying on the trauma, but the partner has changed. The first childhood partner in in scenario is the mama. Okay. Or the, or the dad who's abusing the mother and she's comforting the mother. When she grows up, the same reliance is just an older partner called boyfriend or husband. She's still taking on that same role. She's relying on that role to take care of the, the victim or the person who is uh, causing the abuse. Now, why won't she leave... Uh, to our eyes, right? It's like, you're getting beat up. Why are you not leaving? You're getting abused. Why are you not leaving? You're getting physically, mentally, emotionally abuse of, abused. Why are you not leaving? But the simple answer is she lost her identity of who she was when she was a child. So she has no identity other than I took care of my mother. Now I have to take care of this man because I, that's what I know. Oh my gosh. So as a psychiatrist, what we have to do in this scenario is retrain them. There's no, there's the simplest words is we have to retrain who they are, what they are, and give them strength uh, as an identity purpose, but give them strength to move forward. Okay. And I just got really teary eyed and emotional and I'll, I'll be the first one to test, yes. yes. The losing of one's identity, I've done it. Every relationship, and I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. I feel like I'm melding and losing myself. Right, and, and in, in context, it's not that you're losing yourself. You are losing yourself, but it was to the trauma as a child. You're losing yourself to that trauma. Uh, witnessing and, and uh, reliance. Um, now the question is, once you get rid of that, who are you, right? right. Okay, so now, who am I? Not, right, now people, be, when they have that question, who am I, they're now looking for other identifiers, like the woman movement we talked about the last show, um, like uh, organization, like church and like so now because of social media because now i have can find other people who has my uh, feelings and thought patterns of who am i kind of deal some so, women some women actually get ingrained into the the workforce to hide and mask that trauma still and they refuse oh. to get into a relationship because of that weakness feeling that they will have okay i just missed I, okay somehow we just disconnected there for a second so oh, what was sure. the very last thing that you said so so the last part was certain women it, when they get into the older age they've gone through relationship relationship but decided let's not have a relationship i'm gonna get it ingrained into my work uh, place and i'm going to work 16 18 hours and i'm going to be cold to a relationship and the coldness is not her nature, it's her defensiveness because she just went through a period of um, being uh, codependent of other traumatizing men or whatever. Okay, so they almost like just say enough, I'm done with men and I'm just gonna, okay, right. so that's very interesting because, but isn't that part of the trauma? Because now see, you're bringing up a couple things, couple aspects of my right. life. Uh, so repression was really big up until, you know, three years ago, right? So yeah. I drove 12, 14, 16, 18 hour days sometimes. Uh, and I was, you know, I literally, there was a period of time where I was literally spinning nine plates with partnerships and this business and that business and this particular endeavor. Um, 
to a point where I could not think straight mm -hmm. and it was an extremely unhappy place. Mm -hmm. And I attempted to try to control everything, all of these plates and all of the things that were going on, but it was so crazy, so hectic, so scattered, so disorganized. And yet now looking back on it, I'm like, oh my God, that was total trauma. Who normal person would do that? Right. It would be nuts. So let's say, in one hand, one could say it was trauma, but in, in now, now knowing you a little bit more, I would say it's not a new trauma, it's the old trauma being disguised. And the, dis and, and the, defensive, the defensive side of it, you disguised it using your work, which convertedly, because you didn't deal with the trauma by itself, what it made you now feel, and this is the, the esteem as aspect of it, is I'm worthless. I don't know how to do a business. I don't know how to do this career. I must not be good in this career. Well, the truth is, no, you're excellent in this stupid, stupid career. I just, <laughs> you're, excellent, <laughs> you're excellent in your career. You just try to use it in the different manner. And that is you, you try to compress the, the trauma instead yeah. of dealing with the trauma and they're standing mentally uh, strong. Well, that is, and you know what? You hit it right on the head, um, Dr. Sean. You know why? Because I had such an intensity about my energy. Uh, you know what? And I, I will tell you, I rose right to the top of every organization, you know, right. you know and literally was um, just rose right to the top. It just was numbers producing, you know, getting stuff done. Right. Uh, but there was a part of a need to prove. So I don't know. I don't think that that's probably related to the trauma from what I could gather. But uh, does the female woman not feeling worthy? So therefore, am I going to overcompensate? So a need to a little bit. But I wanted to uh, over I, I literally overcompensated. So here's how that showed up. And that showed up in, you know, 90 10 partnerships. That showed up in where I did, you know, five to 10 times more things than my partners. And I wanted it to somehow, it was almost like I wanted to rescue or fix or, uh, so I get that now, now it's a codependency thing where I wanted to rescue a partner and wanted to pull him out of his, you know, toxicity and, and I can, I am a hero. And I'm going to make sure that I can pull him out of depression or whatever, you know? <laughs> so I felt like I was like superwoman. I was invincible. I obviously looking back now, I go, that was the scariest state. Like talk about high risk because, you know, from repression, so workaholicism, right? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. to repressing, suppressing, which is unconscious and conscious, but Dr. Sean, I look at it like, oh my gosh, that was a space of, and if there are other people doing this with conditions, not right. only substances. Well, so here, here, here's, here's a simple, simple way of, of um, um, identifying the, the scenario in an adult. A uh, couple of things you said. One is you had to prove yourself. Well, who, who do you need to prove yourself against? To who? Yeah, that was that that comes from having four older brothers, but then it being in a male dominated industry, I did always just rise up to the top and then guys never really liked me because I was right. Like, oh. And then and then you question yourself of uh, the identity aspect of woman and had to overcompensate because you thought because I'm a woman that I had to prove myself because I'm a woman. All right. So in all of that, I will ask you one question. Who are yeah. you? I'm a woman. Ah. Give me something that's not obvious. Um, like a creation statement. I mean, I'm a human being, and I'd like people to see me as a human being. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. And 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 that's what I'm referring to. Even in today's time, even though. Uh, everyone is as successful out there and all you ladies who are very very successful you have to ask yourself and i know you ask yourself who am i <laughs> oh, 
no idea. I still ask that today. I and, ask and, that. And, and that question of who am I is addressing the trauma that you had when you were younger or in a teen level. And that is when I said that when a child is taking care of the mama and the, the trauma, they're losing their identity as juveniles growing up as a child. Who am I? Who are, who are you? That kind of question. So does that ever go away? I mean, so that can the codependency, can you overcome through healing some of these uh, trauma attached, you know, actions or behaviors? No, no, absolutely. You can, you can uh, grow out of it. I, and I, the reason I say grow out of it, because it takes time to readjust your traits and your personality and all of those things, your character. Um, A lot of so work. <laughs> a lot of people don't realize how hard it is, um, but it, it is hard work, yes. But you can grow out of it, absolutely. But the number one problem I see when people try to grow out of it, and even when they do get out of it, and that is in two parts, to themselves and to the exterior, that is trust. Yes. They don't even trust themselves because they're questioning now every thing they do Every yep. oh i can attest to that and everything and, you know, they do every oh step even, in, even my recreation even in recreating myself mm -hmm. after having mm -hmm. had, uh, you know yep. uh, financial abuses and now recreating myself every single time i move forward one step at a time whatever endeavor it is even with you i told you now mm -hmm. look <laughs> I have trust issues. Do you remember that conversation? I, 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 I do remember that. I, <laughs> I remember it, but you didn't have your finger up, though. <laughs> no, but this is like the, the space I'm in with everybody as I move forward. Like, just so you know, you need to know that I have severe trust issues and my trust has been broken so many freaking times. Yep. That now, with having it broken and moving forward, that trust comes up all the time, all the time. Because of all the experiences of where my trust was broken by you know, 16 other individuals. So then when that shows up here, I freak out and I get triggered. I do. I get triggered and I go, oh my God, here it is. And then it pulls me back to that. Stay. And then, and then here, here's the here is the hardship of the uh, the personality trait of being a codependent. You get out of it. You recognize that you're out of it. The trust issue kicks in, and then because of that trust issue, someone convinces you, "All right, I got you. Don't worry about me. I got you." Okay. You start to give them a little trust, but then slowly but surely, they start to address your verbal abusing and then mental abusing, and then perhaps physical abusing, and hopefully a lot of you leave before that happens. But after a while, you're in a relationship and you're now recognizing I'm in an abusive relationship. Yeah. And, and then the cycle goes all over again. Guilt kicks in, mm -hmm. and then w this wonder kicks in, and then who the heck am I? What am I doing? All these, all these things kick in, yes. And it's not even in intimate relationships, right? Can't that happen in friendships? Oh, no, absolutely. It can be just simply, right. It can, in, in a woman's position, it can be as simple as, I like this guy, I'm just going to simply try him out. He's a nice guy. Yeah. And, I, and I hear that a lot. He's a nice guy. Okay, well, what makes him nice? Well, he's not beating me upside my head. That's what makes him nice, okay? Um, and I'm being facetious here, but still the point. Um, so, so the niceness is being is being uh, compared to the trauma itself. Yeah, old or old traumas, right? As long as you're not traumatizing me like this, over subconsciously and consciously, they're they're comparing it. Then they're saying this guy's a nice guy, but in actuality, really, is that what makes him a nice guy? Because he's not hitting you or misabusing you. What constitute what constitutes a nice guy? Yeah. This is part of the identity yeah. that has yeah. to be addressed because as a child, a non-traumatizing relation is like mom, dad who'd never drink, never smoke, never beat their kids. Okay. Daughter knows what a man is supposed to be like because she sees daddy. 
how daddy treats mama. Yes. Daughter knows how to be a woman because she sees mama and sometimes grandmama, but she sees the relations of the adult and she now knows how to be a woman because right. of, the re of the nurturing nature and growth of the parenting. Yes. This is the problem between traumatized kids, codependency, and non-traumatized codependence. Okay. A woman, a young child who has her father, has her mother, or even a mother, but has a good relationship with boyfriend and so on, will grow up and have an identity of what a good man is and what a woman is supposed to be. Yes. A traumatized woman has no clue. And even if she did get one of those good guys, she will question it and probably run him away. Yep. Yeah. Well, because of the trust issue, again. Because of the trust issue and because of, uh, I know you're not doing it now, but I'm not, I don't know, are you going to do this later kind of deal? Right, but it's all about the trust, yes. And, and she doesn't know if she can trust. I mean, there have been situations where, you know, I've had, uh, pa you know, past relationships and I'm like, he's going to do what everybody else did. But it, it, it usually shows up in a different way. So let's Correct. say where, you know, maybe the person before wasn't controlling with something else, and then the control shows up, and then you start, as those type of behaviors show up, then I get further lack of trust, freak out, and then I withdraw. Triggered, I mean, I, and then, yes, absolutely, yes. Point, to a point where then I get to a certain point in time, and every single one of them, and you know, Dr. Sean, it's interesting you're bringing this up, but. So there are repeated patterns, but then there's been repeated patterns of I get to a certain point where I take it, take it to a point, you know, mm -hmm. and I get a tolerance and then I bolt yes. because I realized, you know what, this is not a healthy relationship and this isn't going to change. And the only change I can make that's going to be healthy is for me to get out. Yeah. And so I bolt. Yeah. Interesting. So this is where... This is where with the people that you have dealt with, that's their patterns. That's their parents, patterns. And, and I will always ask the lady uh, in the context just of the lady position, I will always ask them, have you ever said to him, are you sure you love me? Yeah. If you ask another man or whatever, that are you sure? You're questioning him <laughs> and his motive, but in context, you're not questioning him nor his motive. You are doubting yourself and the relationship you're in with this man who says, I love you. Right. And, and is that the trauma talking then? Is that what and you're that, saying? And that, that's the fear and that's the trauma that's just boiled up to the top. And now she's at the crossroads and she decides, like you said, you get to that crossroad and then uh, I'm not trusting it. I, I, I'll, I'll let it go. And then you just let it go. Too much complexity. There's too much lack of yeah. trust. There's too much maybe behavior from the other person that was unhealthy. And, uh, or, or the individual itself who's misbehaving. There's a lot of times in the women's position, they will trick or uh, bring up a scenario to see what he's going to do. Um, oh, almost like testing, testing. Yeah, right, like an ambushing type scenario, right? She's, she's basically ambushing her own relationship to prove what point that he likes you. <laughs> <laughs> self-sabotage self-sabotage right 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 absolutely absolutely which, which is i think a tendency of again trauma isn't it from the past it's, it's a byproduct of the the trauma and byproduct of the fear and then the byproduct of moving forward without dealing with that trauma and those fears correct and, and lack of uh really but the basis of the lack of worthiness Again, that goes back to the child. That's the self, the self identity and the self esteem of who I am bringing to this relationship. Yes. Because of the original violation or traumas. Correct. That Correct. changed literally in that little child's brain or whatever happened. Right. And, and now bring it up into adult life and why mm. there's so many relationships that fail because right. you cannot 
and again, we're using obviously a she as a victim from trauma. She then will go into adult life and use it again and again, uh, but will never truly be able to trust unless she actually heals. Correct. Right. And and you'll you'll hear it if you if you're if you're keen to it. A lot of if you get a group of ladies together and they will always say, uh, "What happened to John?" For example, um, well he just did me wrong and he wasn't there when I needed him. And so I just let him go. Well, in context, really, <laughs> she's meaning, meaning this. So of course you probably didn't hear it because you can relate to her. I had guys who, okay, here, here's the point. Why is she blaming someone else? Right. As soon as you blame someone else, Maybe, and I'm not saying all scenarios, but I'm saying maybe one has to uh, uh, be aware that you can't take your trauma, you can't take your insecurities and place it on someone else and blame them because of the lack of what they can or cannot do. Correct. But, but doesn't it seem as if, uh, so somebody who's been traumatized and triggered, yeah. right? And dealing with somebody else who might or might not be traumatized, because I know we had just said that everyone's really traumatized, but let's say their triggers or their traumas, right. and then you've got this person with major traumas, right? right. I mean, how, how can you, anyone actually have a functional relationship ever if there's no trust and there's lack of, you know, there's just, oh my gosh, I just don't see how, and again, I'm using me kind of an ex as an example because I'm being obviously very vulnerable to say I've had multiple right. issues, right? you know, and yet I've gotten to a point in my life where I'm like, Susan, you've got to look at all this stuff. Not only the financial losses, girl, and right. you recreate yourself and it's taking, it's going much slower. You know, I thought I was going to bounce right back, but you know what? The trust issues and every way I look is going off. These little radars, these little red flags, bing, 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 bing. So, you know, it just to get me back to a state of peace, it's almost like I have to put myself into a space of more meditation and just calm down, get more peaceful. Which, so, which, which, right, yes, but which also you have to be mindful of it because that meditation, that way of living is also a disguise of exclusion to the social side of you okay and i just missed that again i apologize but the internet went out so what was sure. the last thing you just said okay so we we have to be mindful of meditation to a degree because when it comes to meditation and prayer and however else that looks like be mindful of it because that lifestyle is is a disguising of an exclusion of the social makeup okay okay, okay. so Okay. So, so a lot of times when there's stresses at your workplace and that stress like business and things aren't going your way and you have to grind through things and you have to pump through it, um, what do I need to do to exclude myself, okay? Give myself away because at the end of the day, you're not the only one who's going through it. No. The whole team is going through it. The whole right? team? What do you mean the whole team? All right, so... So let's put it in a scenario. Uh, let's say you work with a uh, the office, and that office has four or five other individuals, yeah. and the and the business by itself is struggling. Well, yes. if the business is struggling, the whole team, all of you, are feeling the crunches behind it. Okay. So. Okay. So, so if, okay, okay. If, if the individual then, if the whole team is feeling the crunch and feeling the pressure of the, the lack of the business, when the individual say, all right, I got to go away and I got to go do yoga because I'm about to lose it, yeah. that's okay. an exclusion of what the scenario should be. A true leader in context will be the leader that says, all right, guys, I'm here with you. What are we going to do? How are we going to move forward? So it's a justifying, again, justifying behavior to take one out. And so uses uh, something, whatever, whatever they want to use as a space of, I need to lead. So, okay, got it. So in a leadership perspective, what you're saying is a leader isn't being a leader if right. 
they have to excuse their behavior and check themselves out of being present at the office. Correct. Oh my gosh. So Correct. how many times is that happening in the world right now? So how many people, again, didn't we just say that everyone has been traumatized? And so it doesn't matter if it's going to be workers or managers or the true leaders, CEOs, right? So, wow. Um, so it happens a lot. And it does. And, and because of technology, because of social because, um, connections and all of those things, everyone is at the same level of the trauma of experiences, the okay. feeling, the fears, all of yes. it. So we're, we're all now inclusive of that, that idea of trauma. And so we're now trying to adjust our, our life, our family life, our business life, and our everything life. I mean, kids get on all of our dang nerves, but when you say yeah. you hold on to the kids and I'm going to go do this, or I'm going to lose it. Well, come on now. That's that's. <laughs> we have to uh, we have to address the the underlying issue right there. So you can't run. You've got to face it. So you know, I'm just looking at the time, uh, Doctor Sean. Sure, and you know, sure. I have a feeling that we're gonna uh, yeah. end up having multiple conversations about trauma because there's so much there, yes. and because of the space even that I'm in right now with realizing this whole episode is really about my life exactly as it is and i'm attempting to be as vulnerable as i can with my own experiences so that somebody out there listening to this particular episode really understands the depth of self-sabotage and the abuses that i put myself in and then the trust uh to have had so many failed you know really relationships where I failed on every single one of them, running from every single one of them because I found them to be unhealthy. Now going back, sure. uh, there's so there's so, okay, so there's so much more in terms of future. I think episodes on trauma that I would love to touch on. I think this is just the first one of okay. so many. But um, let me ask you this. Let's let's end it with this. Are there individuals? Gosh, I hope that there's an optimistic answer. <laughs> but with as many people that is traumatized out there, and I, I get that my situation is probably really quite extreme because I was so probably stubborn to not get it soon enough, but I was really spinning a lot, you know? It's been a lot of place. With that said, is there a positive? I mean, is there eventually, do some of these people do the work? Are they able to have not normal, who wants normal, but like an actual happy end result. Because if you think about it, there have been moments where I thought to myself, having had such amounts of trauma in my adult life, in my childhood, and my adolescence, you know, is there a light at the end of the tunnel with God? And this is why I have a journey with God right now. With God, is there a happy ending for some of these people? Or are they forever? <laughs> going to be in these spirals of unhealthy right. trauma filled relationships. Right. right. Now, if I look at it in my profession and answer it, I would say yes, because people who come to me, come to me with the, the idea of I need help and I'm here to help you. Okay. If, if I look at it in a social makeup and Mark, I'm going to say no, because they're not looking for help. They're looking how to mask it better. You mean the people who are trauma? Yes, are trauma? So, right. So, so relationships, like for example, sixty-nine percent of marriages are ending. Right? We can classify it and, and give it a label and say it's because of a sex issue or a um, financial issue. But at the end of the day, all of those are just excuses. Yes. The underlying reason there's a lot of divorces is because there are a lot of people who were traumatized, 69% of them was traumatized that they never addressed their traumas. So therefore, when the relationship got to a point, they just bailed. They separated. I see. So, so what you're saying is the majority of the people out there are not realizing that one, they have trauma and then secondly, doing the work to fix their trauma and correct. trauma. Correct, correct. Uh, what they do is they just continue to repeat cycles of- Correct, 
from uh, patterns again right. and again and uh, until what the day they die um wow. at the end of the day at the end of the day yes until they die or someone can deal with their traumas meaning deal with the person itself um so if if you got if you're the type of woman who's always nagging a guy you'll find a guy eventually who can take your nagging and dismiss it and not take it personal and you'll think he was a, he's a godsend but in actuality he's just who he is and would he want you not to nag yes but you're a nagger and that's what he says you are and he accepted you for you but yeah. here's the problem you still yeah. not handling the reason why you're nagging all the dang time. <laughs> the trauma. The trauma. Because of a simple trauma, trust issue, or whatever. Right, right, right. Uh, so it's always getting down to the root, would you yes. say? Getting down yes. to the, of the problem. So people. If, if, yes. So what so, would be the. If I have just one question, and that is like, so. Would it then be best for all individuals to start putting their finger at themselves and saying, I have trauma and I need to figure out what it is and work on it? Well, yes, the answer is, is yes, they have to do that. But in order to do that, one has to look at self and say, I've been traumatized. And that is not saying there's something wrong with you. That's just simply mean you had a bad experience in your life, that something happened, and that experience is now carrying over into your adult life, and now we have to address it because it's affecting your lifestyle. Yes. Um, so, yeah. yes, we all, they all need help, um, but to look in the mirror and say, I need help to get help, that's a different story. But see, isn't that interesting? And that's how you and I cross paths, because I like I said, three years ago, have heavily gone into really healing. And then I would say the last year and a half, really intense healing further. There's obviously a ton more to come, um, a lot more, boy. But maybe, just maybe, and this is something I've thought, and that is maybe I am supposed to share my trauma story so that there are individuals, because, you know, there's so many aspects of it, yeah. so many different aspects. And I'm finally willing to start to be the guinea pig because, and, and I'm okay with that because I had all walls up where nobody knew me and now to a point where it's like all walls down, everything, you know, my entire life I failed. I mean, literally, I, that's what I feel like. <laughs> everything I've ever done, let's just say I failed at everything. Right. I'll start from ground up. Right. If I tell somebody else out there, right. that's the intention. Right. But some, sometimes failure is not failure. Failure is a way of figuring out, I shouldn't be doing this. I should be doing it a different way. So luckily for you, you're not like 60, like Colonel Sanders was trying to start all over. <laughs> we, we got a little time, so don't, don't beat yourself up. Um, but at the same time, yes, um, everyone needs to be like you to a degree, and that is, we have to figure out who we are, get rid of the mess that we, the experiences that we went through, deal with it and how to deal with it so we can move forward and then help each other grow into uh, a new, better society, I should say. Well, and I, I just wonder, you know, with what we're doing and using Facebook a little differently than most, <laughs> I hope that we can be that beacon of light, Dr. Sean. I really do. That maybe well, we can some of the people if, Isolated. Yeah, if we even just have one, that's I'm good with that one. I am too. If we can put that out there in terms of anyone who's hearing this and and they understand our intention of wanting to help, you know, through our stories and obviously these shows, that's all we can hope for, right? Right. And walk forward right. in faith and walk forward in faith. So again, yeah. I third show, and yet I understand why we are doing this. Every awesome. single Wow, you just touch on so many topics and they go in 10 different directions. <laughs> a lot more topics to cover. So thank you again for your time today. Oh, really thank you. And uh, looking forward to the next show. Thank you Absolutely. so much. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you, Susan. Bye-bye. Okay.